Hello, and welcome to Powerful Places Podcasts. I'm your host, Gary White, and today we hear Ellen interviewing me about the Ermita de San Baudelio de Berlanga in the province of Soria in Spain. This podcast is available either in audio form or with video, so take your pick and let's get started. Well, Gary, it's a treat to interview you for a change, sort of turning the tables. Yes, it is, isn't it? <laughs> yes, and I'm, I'm eager to hear what you have to say and share about one of those very unusual and little known places that we visited and wrote about in Powerful Places guidebooks on the Caminos de Santiago. And this place is San Baudelio de Berlanga in Soria province in the larger region of Castilla y Leon. We're talking about the northern Meseta area. Yes, that's a, uh, a very unusual place. Uh, in the first place, we found it in a very isolated area. It's kind of up in a uh, a draw of a canyon, or not a, exactly a canyon, but a valley, uh, in a very isolated area. Uh, a, a an almost cubical building, and when we went inside, just amazing things because the entire walls ceiling, every place in there uh, was or what had been covered uh, with these amazing frescoes. Uh, and they were frescoes of elephants and bears and people hunting and just amazing, uh, amazing things. Uh, there was a uh, man on duty who collected our uh, our admission charge and was also selling uh, books about the uh, about the place. Uh, we before you go on, you say that these it was covered with these frescoes. Yes, because in nineteen in the nineteen twenties, uh, this place was totally abandoned and had been purchased uh, by someone who owned the uh, the land and owned all of the property. And he sold the frescoes to uh, an American art dealer. So that in 1926, they came there and removed the frescoes from the walls and took them to the USA, uh, where they mostly still are. If I remember, there was quite a furor in the neighborhood about this, and they tried legally to stop the exportation of these amazing uh, frescoes, but they lost in the courts, and he snuck in at night with his experts and wheeled them away before anybody could stop him. Yes, uh, quite, a, quite a story we heard about, uh, about all of that uh, almost theft one might say uh but the uh the place belonged to uh, it was a private property at that point so it wasn't a part of any cultural heritage i guess for, uh, mm -hmm. so far as the courts mm -hmm. were concerned anyway uh the frescoes for the most part are gone but their shadows remain and it makes for a very eerie kind of experience because you don't see the fresco of the bear, but you see this kind of shadow of the bear and the shadow of the elephant. And all of them are still are still there in some way, uh, but but they're gone. As if they've left their imprint. Yes. I think another interesting aspect to these frescoes is they seem to, on the one hand, be sort of very uh, Moorish or uh, North African in, in content and flavor, the hunt mm -hmm. uh, with the dogs and so forth. And on the other, there are some of the frescoes in a different part of the building uh, around the apse that looks like it's been built onto this sort of cubic building. Um, and these are 
quite Christian in theme. Yes, it was as if the building was half Christian and half Islamic. Uh, the Christian portion, which had the apse and the, uh, and the altar area, uh, was very clearly uh, Christian. And then the back half of the, of the building had this sea of, of small columns uh, like you would find in a mosque somewhere. Yes, yeah, sort of like a miniature of the, um, the mosques that became a cathedral in, in Cordoba, in, in Cordoba. the Mesquite, yes. um, which looks like just a forest of, of arches repeating, the, repeating and repeating. And then in the middle of the large cubicle area, uh, which at one end has this sort of miniature forest of, of arches, but in the middle of the main part of this hermitage is another amazing thing, a huge yes. central column that ends with leaves on top, sort of like a huge palm tree. It looks like one gigantic palm in the center. Uh, it's the central column that's holding up the, uh, the, the center of the building, but it fans out in all directions. And up in there, there's actually uh, like a little mitrab. Yeah, there's a, there's a niche, and it's been suggested that that was pointing the direction to prayer uh, to Mecca, mm -hmm. and that, the, that niche would be called a mitrab. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that area had been a part of Islamic Spain when, uh, when the Moors were there, and it had shifted back and forth between Christian and, uh, and Islamic. Uh, I think the borders shifted a mm -hmm. number of times. Mm -hmm. We almost thought that perhaps the Christians and the Moors uh, worshiped together there. Um, uh, it has been speculated, not just by us. Right. Because these, the frescoes and this, the, the building as it is now uh, was constructed in the mid-12th century when these borders were fluid. And we know that in some parts of Spain, there really was a convivencia, a living together in peace of the Jewish, Christian, and, and uh, Muslims. And we don't know, and the researchers and scholars don't know, but it's been suggested that maybe, or it could have been sequential, that it was used as one way and then it was used as another, but we really don't know. Yeah. But it was a, a fascinating place. Yes, and there were other little mysteries in there. Uh, at the very back corner, under this sea of arches, mm -hmm. uh, which is a sea of arches in miniature because they only go up about halfway on the building. They, there's an upper floor above that, mm -hmm. uh, above that area with all the little columns. But in the back corner, there's a cave, and it's a natural cave, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, you might think had been originally a, a hermit's cave. Probably was, and then this was built on afterwards, in somehow in relationship with the hermit who lived there. Right. Um, and a beautiful natural spring just outside. outside yes. It, it was, it's really just an amazing place in a very isolated area. Let's talk a little bit about the energies of the place because they were oh, yeah. quite quite strong and quite strange. Uh, yes, uh, I was uh, I, I was going in with my dowsing rods and being very circumspect uh, about how I was using them because uh, there was a uh, caretaker there and I, I didn't know if he would be uh, if he would like what I was doing. But he saw what I was doing, and he got out his pendulum and showed us all sorts of places in there where there were uh, very strange energies. Yeah. Yes, I, I remember being so surprised. I was thinking, oh, what's he going to do if he sees us uh, measuring energies? And instead, I believe he took his, he had a Christian, uh, I don't know, if it was a, a medal of a virgin or a saint or what, yeah. around his neck on a chain, and he took it off. And he Made showed that a pill, how it a, a swung pendulum. in certain places. Yes. Uh, which was an important lesson to us about 
you know, being discreet and yet also because you don't want to offend people. Right. When you go into their space or the place that they are responsible for. But that sometimes, much to your surprise, you'll find they are interested uh, or even participating yes. uh, in you in this discovery. Yeah, and that has happened ha has happened more than once yes, as we've gone yes. into these uh, into these places. Uh, but all in all, uh, a place that is very well worth uh, driving out into the countryside in Soria mm -hmm. to visit. Mm -hmm. And if you don't want to go that far, you can see the uh, the frescoes that were peeled off the walls. They have been sold, and are. Uh, some of them, at least, are still available in different places. Some of them are on probably permanent loan at the uh, Prado Museum in Madrid. Um, where we saw them. Where we saw them, yes. yeah. Uh, but there are others. Uh, Metropolitan Museum. And I think Indianapolis. Indianapolis. I am not sure, but if you, uh, yes, Boston, the Cloisters in New York. Yes. So if you do a search online for the uh, frescoes of, or mural paintings of San Baudelio de Berlanga, uh, you can at least see the originals, which was more than we could see. That's right. In this beautiful place. I mean, I remember afterwards going to the Prado and seeing the bear mm -hmm. uh, in its original form, and it was mm -hmm. really quite, mm -hmm. quite striking mm -hmm. there. Go to www.powerfulplaces.com and www.powerfulplaces.info to learn more about the Powerful Places guidebook series.